welcome to the session everybody uh, so we are going to cover about the azure container apps in this session some of the knowledge etiquettes we have to follow first is the punctuality uh, join the session 5 minutes prior to the session start time we start on time and conclude on time second is feedback make sure to submit a feedback for all the session because it is very helpful for us silent mode keep your mobile devices in silent mode feel free to move out of the session in case you need to attend something call last is the avoid the disturbance avoid unwanted chit chat during the session yeah. following is the agenda for the session first we will cover the introduction to container apps then we will going to discuss why we should use container apps and uh, microservices architecture third is how azure container apps is uh, different with azure kubernetes services in azure fourth one is how it works behind the scene in azure why we will cover the demo creating the azure container app using the terraform so coming to the first part which is basically the introduction to container apps so container apps basically the service platform serverless platform basically it allows you to maintain the less infrastructure and uh, saving the cost while running the containerized applications you do not need to worry about the configuration part over there uh, like orchestration you do, do not need to worry the deployment parts you do not need to worry it uh, is managed by azure itself container will provide you the all the up to date infrastructure for you to keep your application more secure and stable so some of the common use cases of the container apps first basically the deploying the apis on the container apps then hosting the background processing jobs third one is the handling the event driven processing for the microservices which is a trending thing in the devops world so running the microservices over the container apps is also a huge case coming to the part why should we use the container apps and microservices architecture to understand it better we first need to understand what is monolithic and uh, what is microservice architecture so in case of monolithic architecture all the components and all the functionality of application are uh, integrated into a single code base means the they share the same technology suppose the application is there so user interface business logic data access layer all the components are going to share the same technology and uh, they are tightly integrated and deployed together in case of the deployment but in case of the microservice architecture each functionality is separated into a microservice for example there is a e-commerce app in case of e-commerce application we will have the following microservices here is the example of a website which consists of shopping cart payment details and the recommendation of the parts so in microservices what we will do we will segregate those services into a microservice first one is the shopping cart service cart payment service recommendation service so the main advantage of microservice architecture over monolithic is the scalability scalability is there and also there is no dependency on the technology itself like i can code a card payment service in different programming language and shopping cart service in a different programming language there is no need to worry about, about the tech stack like different teams can work upon on different technology on this and also suppose i need to add a payment options so i will do the changes on the payment service only <clears throat> but in case of the monolithic application i have to i will have a cross team dependencies i need to connect with every team member dv guy and every guy then i need to make changes on the every layer like user interface business logic layer data access layer and the database itself 
but in case of micro service i am working upon on the single service which is relevant to my feature so what are the feature needs to be added i am working upon on that feature only this is the beauty of microservice architecture and also this is like suppose uh, recommendation service is down so there is no impact on the whole whole application but in case of monolithic application if data access layer is down then every application whole application will get down so these are the some of the advantages of microservice architecture over the and uh, we can see like uh, suppose i need to add a payment option so i will work upon on this card payment service only in microservice architecture each microservice will have its own db monitoring and storage and security so every microservice is going to have a separate resources for those database storage security and monitoring then coming to the features of the container apps in azure what we have so the features there are plenty of features are there in azure in container apps we can run our containers from any registry whether it is aws gcp any public private or including the docker hub itself we can run containers from any registry and also we can provide an existing virtual network while creating the environment for our container apps then we have the option of uh, enabling the https and tcp ingress without having to manage other azure infrastructure then we have the option of on demand scaling as well auto scaling is there based on the certain conditions like uh, http requests uh, no number of http requests are coming on particular date then we can auto scale it securely managing the secrets directly in your application we can integrate the azure key vault in a container app directly so that parts we also need not to manage then we have the monitoring part we can also monitoring the logs using the azure log analytics then in case of blue green deployments uh, support we have to test the application like uh, we do not want to expose a uh, hundred percent traffic so in that scenario what we will do like we will provision two instances and uh, 80 percent traffic uh, will going to be on that first container and then 20 percent is going to be on that container so it container apps also so, uh, supports that feature Apart from these application weights uh, on the container apps uh, also dynamically scale based on the following characteristics. First one is the uh, HTTP traffic means number of requests are coming to the application, then event driven processing, then based on the CPU and memory load. There are few scenarios uh, where we can utilize the container apps. First one is I the public Friends, uh, I'd like to hold on for a second. Uh, we are constantly hearing some background, background noise from your end. Uh, can you please check it once? What sort of background, background noise? Because nobody is speaking, only the fan is running. Guys, is it, uh, is it uh, only with me or can anyone else confirm that they're, they're, if you guys yeah. are hearing some background noise? Yeah, I am also listening to this noise. Yes, yes, me too. Friends, uh, I guess you need to check it once, please. I'm not able to like clarify like whether it is a person voice because there is no voice, only the fan noise. I think. Uh, I and think. Are, are you are you simultaneously working on something? Because uh, I I guess the this is this is a noise uh, that can be heard uh, with with your hand movements if you are doing anything right now. There is of container apps. First one is basically we can utilize the container apps in deploying the APIs. In case of APIs, uh, there you can see that. Traffic is split between 80 to 20 percent. Two regions we have deployed. 
and uh, auto scaling criteria will be decided based upon the HTTP request. Then we have the background processing. So in case we want to run some background task, then auto scaling is going to determine by the level of CPU and memory. Level. Third one is the event driven processing. Uh, basically, the messaging services when we deployed. So, those services called the event driven services. Then, microservice architecture. Microservice architecture we can also manage with the container apps. There is an option to integrate with Dapper. Dapper provides the, to manage microservices within the container apps. So then how is your container app service different from the EKS? So to understand this, we well, basically, first we need to understand the EKS itself. EKS basically a container orchestrator platform. It's a really powerful. It uh, knows how to run the containers and microservices at cloud uh, at a scale. Basically, but uh, if uh, there is an organization who want to deploy their application and modernize them to the new technology. So for the new teams, for the new developers, their APS will be tough to learn and understanding the concepts of Kubernetes to make their application up and running in the containers. So in case of the APS, what we need to do, first we need to create a Docker file for a particular application. Then we will create a EKS cluster on the Azure. Then we need to write some YAML files, deployment file, service file, ingress file, lot of more concepts. And uh, every concept uh, then we want to implement, we need to write the YAML file. That is really complex to understand for a new beginner. But in case of container apps, container apps provides the super first part for us to publish our containers. So basically, it's not a replacement of APS, it's just a Azure managed for you because behind the scene, there is a container powering up by the Azure for you. So to understand later, this is the difference. This is the deployment part YAML. If we want to deploy our application in AKS, this is the deployment file we are going to return. It consists of everything that uh, the event to containers up and running. So the name and the image. And uh, for service exposing the application to internet, then we need, uh, we need to write the service here, dot .yaml, then in this dot .yaml certificates. There are a lot of concepts. But in case of the container app, uh, we just need to pass the image and the port now and ingress if you want to enable it or not. So this is a simple step to deploy our application on the container apps compatibly with the APS. Then how the container apps works, as I talked about earlier. So it's a serverless platform, but behind the scene, Azure Kubernetes services is actually powering the container. But there is a catch. We do not need to configure the deployment YAML, service YAML, and manage the EKS cluster itself, like auto scaling, we do not need to manage it. We just will pass the minimum replica and then max replica. To provide some of the powerful capabilities, uh, it's uh, layered upon on the open source technology, which uh, Azure uses for auto scaling. Uh, containers can scale down all the way to zero and inactive when there is no traffic, then they can be downgraded to zero as well and when there is high load then it can scale to dozens of container so the technology name is the ada ada is an open source stack which makes that happen for us so if i am deploying more and more microservices there is a wrapper which is a different thing just totally different technology so dapper provides us all the functionality which a cloud developer needs to successfully 
implement the microservice architecture. The service to service invocation, state management, publish and subscribe model. And there are a lot of other features are there. Then the, we have a, or we can deploy the container app using the Terraform scripts. So to come out there. Yeah, I've written the Terraform script for deployment of Azure Container Apps. So first, the thing is we need to create a block for container app environment because our container app will going to reside under this environment. This will use the log analytics for the monitoring purpose. So monitoring will be handled by this workspace. All the logs will be collected on this workspace. Here we are defining the container app. This is the template which consists what we need to write in the deployment.yaml in case of AKS. So here we are defining the container instances, minimum, maximum, then, then the CPU and memory. Then these are the environments where we are defining. This is the base image provided by Microsoft Hello World image. Then here we are defining the ingress, whether we want to enable it or not. Actually, in secure connection to then this is the traffic meters which I talked about earlier. If we want to support the blue green deployments, then we have this option traffic is splitting percent is 200. Yeah, so following resources are going to be created, but this will take uh, 15 to 20 minutes to destroy in Azure. So I'm not going to run the apply this way. I'm just going to continue app environment is going to be deployed. And then the workspace, all the resources we have done. So what if uh, we want to use the our Azure Container Registry. Then we need to some, make some changes on the main.tf. This is basically using the base image which is provided by Microsoft for the testing purpose. This image. But suppose we want to use our container registry. So then there needs to be a container registry which we are going to pass in our variable the ID of the container registry. Then the server address of the container registry. There is a user assigned identity we will going to create which have the permission of ACR pull, which will pull the image to the container from the ACR. So the user assigned identity we will create Here we have defined the role definition, what role identity will have, and the scope. The scope is only limited to the ACR. Then this identity we need to have here as well.
uh, I do not have any idea of a share right away. So, so this is how we will deploy the container at the museum. That's pretty much from my side. Any questions? Hi, Prince. Uh, sorry, I didn't heard you well. Uh, are we done with the session? Yeah, we are done with the session. Only that it will take 15 to 20 minutes to deploy the resource on Azure. So it's just okay. uh, yeah, one command I need to run. The resource will be here. But that's not the free account with me. That's why I have to deploy the resource to there. But also, it is taking too much time. Fine, fine, fine. I guess the, that is uh, not a worry thing. Uh, guys, if you're having any queries, you can please uh, uh, ask with Prince right now. I guess this yeah. is the right time and the right platform to get your queries resolved and answered by Prince. Uh, 